We now move ahead in our discussion to individual and specific financial statements. And this is now going to form the crux of our understanding of financial accounting and financial statements, right? So let's first understand the first financial statement that is important for us. And that's that's where we're going to look at the balance sheet as a statement, right? Subsequently, we will look at the income statement and retained earnings and then we'll go to the cash flow statement separately around it. What do we mean by the balance sheet? Now, a balance sheet is a financial statement that will give us an idea about the overall financial, current financial position of the firm. It's like a snapshot. That's an important keyword of what the company owns and what it owes to various stakeholders, right? Owning and owing. So you're looking at what is your own and what is it that you owe, which you have to give to someone else, right? It is termed as a balance sheet because it represents an equality, right? Sources of funds for a business has, you know, sources of funds that any business has equal the uses of these funds for buying resources for the business. I'll explain this in a moment and we will use some of these terms called sources of funds, uh, what we owe and liabilities interchangeably as we go along and we'll explain that as we go along. Any business has to raise money and there will be certain sources of fund for that raising money right? Why will it balance? Why is it called a balance sheet? It's because it balances. It's an equality. Let's understand why will it always balance? Because the funds that we raise and the applications of this fund will always match. Let's say if you borrow rupees 100 and you buy an ice cream vending machine worth rupees 50 and you have another 50 rupees with you, what are the sources of funds? You've borrowed rupees 100 from wherever maybe you went to a bank maybe you went to a friend and you borrowed this rupees 100 that's your source of funds this is what you owe to someone this is what you are liable to pay to someone else right now you have applied this money somewhere where is that application you have basically bought an ice cream vending machine that's an asset you have created this is what you own correct similarly there's another 50 that is lying in cash that's another asset that you have that's in your pocket, right? This is something that you own still. So the 100 that you borrowed, which is the source of funds, is going to be equal to 50, which is you have basically put in, in some, some future growth asset, plus whatever is left will be in the form of cash. There is no other use. You can either use the money or it will be in your pocket. There can't be any other, uh, other equalities that come out of that, right? Once you create a balance sheet, once the balance sheet is available, after that, any activity that the business does, any activity that the business does, it will either go and hit both the sides, right? It will either go and hit both the sides or it will rearrange items on one side. And we will explain this in more detail as we go along. But for now, this should suffice our understanding. We will kind of move to understanding individual elements of the balance sheet first and then take it ahead in the context of how does it play out, right? So now let's understand this application of sources and application of funds, right? Uh, this uh, is a business and the sources of funds that can be raised from owners. You could get money from owners or you could get money from banks in the form of lenders. The funds can be indirect in nature and we'll look at those separately. Then you can apply these funds. Where do you apply these funds? Those funds could get applied in buying factories, some sort of raw material, some sort of machinery and the remaining would lie in the form of cash. There is no other, other use of it, right? So you raise money from the owners, you raise money from banks, this money comes into the system, these are all sources of my funds, these are all what I owe, I have to return this money back to these guys, right? And it's important to understand in the context of a business that the owner is separate from the business, the owner has put in money, right? This money goes in the form of either raw material, in the form of machinery, in the form of factory, building, etc. And then what is left will be in the form of cash. There is no other use. You cannot really not balance it, right? So you can raise the money and some of the funds can also be indirect in nature, right? How do you use indirect in nature? In the form of vendors and employees who offer products and services without taking immediate payments. Let's say I manufacture a car. My tire supplier gives me the tires without really taking the money for it. In a way, it is a source of funds for me. 
I have to return money for it at some point of time, right? So these are indirect funds that a company can raise. We will look at where do we classify them separately. Then we can use them for application of funds. You can buy business generating assets such as plant, machinery, raw material, etc. Some of these generate business in the long run. Some of these generate business immediately, right? Raw material is going to get used immediately, but a factory will be used over its life. What is left is in the form of either cash that you have in your pocket or bank balance, right? So effectively, the sources and applications of fund will always have to match. Now, what is important for us to understand is that a balance sheet is like a snapshot of a business. Let's understand that. When we say balance sheet is a snapshot of a business, it tells you that any given point of time, what do you owe and what do you own? In the next second, if I go and borrow 10,000 rupees from a bank, my owing will increase by plus 10,000 and what I own, my cash balance will also increase by plus 10,000, right? Let's say my balance sheet is balanced. I go to the bank and borrow another 10,000 rupees. On the, on the one side, my sources of funds will go up by 10,000 rupees. On the other side, my bank balance will go up by 10,000 rupees, thereby saying that I have not yet used this money, but it will remain balanced, right? So effectively, uh, the balance sheet is on any given point of time, right? It's on a point of time. Right now, how much money do you owe to someone? You have taken money from people. How much money are you supposed to repay to them? And right now, exactly how many business assets that you have, right? Now, the same will also be available at one end of the year and the next end of the year, right? Same is available end of next year as well. During the course of the year, you will do some business activity. In going from point A to point B, you will be doing some business activity. All the core business activity that you do, all the core business activity that you do will get captured under the profit and loss statement. I buy raw material, I sell it, I pay salaries, all that in terms of business activity gets captured in the profit and loss statement and all that for the cash activity of the year, right? Anything that is on the cash activity side will come on the cash flow. How much cash has come in, how much cash has gone out. Now in real life, in real sense, we might think that this should be the same as this but we will look at cases where these starts differing at a later point of time when we look at those two statements in more detail for now our understanding is more in terms of what do we mean by the balance sheet and how does the business activity work right so remember a balance sheet is like a snapshot it's like a snap that you have clicked or a picture that you have clicked Right? This is an important definition. It's like you take a camera and you take a snap. What is available at that point of time is captured there. Right? But the next instant, if you click another, another picture or another snap, the condition would have, might have changed. Right? That's exactly how balance sheet is. It is as on a particular date. In fact, as on a particular time as well. The very next minute, if you borrow money, it could change, right? So the next moment, the scenario could be different. The next day, the scenario could be different. The business scenario or snapshot at any given point of time is what is captured in the balance sheet, right? We use multiple terms for these, but typically right now, just understand that it is a statement that is only on a given point of time. It is not a periodic statement, right? On the other hand, this is an annual statement. When we say annual statement, what happened between these two dates is what is getting captured, right? So between these two dates, what sales you made and what expenses you made will get captured in the profit and loss account. Between these two dates, what cash came in and what cash went out will get captured in the cash flow statement. But on this date, what the company owns and owes is captured in the balance sheet and on this date what the company owns and owes is captured in the balance sheet right obviously when we look at it it seems like if i have balance sheet one and i have balance sheet two and then going from here to here we have a pnl and we have a cash flow then there will be a lot of interlinkages between these statements 
they are going to be related to each other right that's going to be an important understanding for us in the context of our overall spectrum of looking at what is a balance sheet and what is the significance of a balance sheet right let's look at the other definitions now what are assets and liabilities remember we took sources of funds this is money that we owe to people we are supposed to return we have to return this and hence it is also called as liabilities so on the balance sheet typically either it is top down but you make two compartments there is one compartment that is the liability part and there is one compartment which is the assets part let's understand this application of your funds is going to generate business or revenue for the business right that's where you buy assets this is what you own in the business right liability is what you owe assets is what you own this is all the source of funds this is all the application of funds these definitions are interchangeable you can use them interchangeably and that is important when you construct the overall contour of uh, of the of the business activities that a firm does right in the balance sheet the classification is happening on from where have you gotten the money and from where are and where are you essentially deploying that money right what kind of assets are available now when you classify the assets there are going to be three kinds of assets broadly one is going to be long term assets or fixed assets right uh, interchangeably they can be used this could be both tangible and intangible we will get to those classifications at a later point of time those assets which generate income for a firm over a period of time for example plant and machinery these are long term assets also known as non current assets right if these are non current assets then the short term assets must be named as current assets correct the short term assets would be named as current assets these are the ones which will be either sold in the near future or converted into cash in the near future usually the technical definition says that it should be converted into cash in less than one year right if you can convert this money into cash in less than one year then that is a short term asset examples of this you can buy inventory of raw materials or finished products right that's one part of it that's called inventory that's an example or i could have sold a car to someone but this buyer will pay us in near future right we are going to get this money we own this money remember someone else owes it to us right so this money is going to come to us in the near future this is also a current asset it's a short term asset right any cash that comes will also be a part of what is called as a current asset because it is immediately usable to convert it into it's already in cash and it can always be converted into business uh, generating assets immediately it's a very liquid asset right that's also a part of current assets everything else that you know a part of fund which does not have an immediate use right now in the business but may have at a later date could be classified in the form of investments right you could have investments in let's say some sort of a bank you could go and put a bank deposits although that is typically treated as cash you could also give it to some sort of a fund to manage that money right the company has therefore passed on the same money to another entity to generate some returns in the interim bank is one example you could give it to someone else as well who can use that money and generate some returns from that money that's the second part of it which is called as investments right so either you will have long term fixed non current assets short term or current assets or the remaining part of it would be in the form of some investments there are some minor classifications in addition to this as well but we will look at them separately at a later point of time not immediately needed for us what are the kind of liabilities that we have right so the initial money invested into the firm by owners and promoters those who own the company uh, is called as share capital right so this is also known as owners equity right this is the money that we start the business with and we we'll look at a very simple business case at some point of time to understand this better but this is the money that we start the business with this is the initial amount of capital that comes out of the business right now over a period of time the company will make money 
right? Let's take a very simple example. Let's say someone puts in 1 lakh rupees into a business. So when it starts, it's owner's equity or share capital that comes in. And on the asset side, let's say this person buys assets worth the same 1 lakh rupees from uh, that that came here right now the business generated a profit of 20000 rupees if the business generated a profit of 20000 rupees this side should sh should see a cash increase of 20000 rupees how do you balance it on the other side whose money is this this money is from the equity guys or the share capital or the owners right so this 20000 belongs to them either you could take this cash out and give it to these guys Right? In which case this this is not there. This will go back to 1 lakh and 1 lakh. But if you have not given it to them, you have put this money back into the company in a sense. You can use this cash and buy more assets from this 20,000. Right? In that case, this is what is called as reserves and surplus. It will have to be returned to the shareholder at some stage in the future. But we classify it as reserves and surplus and put 20,000 here. Together these two is what the owner claims from us. So the owner now claims 1,20,000 from us. We have used this 20,000 generated on behalf of the owner to get more assets for us, right? These two put together will classify what is called as the owner's equity. Remember, the owner and the business are different. So the business is supposed to return money to the owner. Ownership can change hands. I can sell my company to you, correct? So that's important for us to kind of check and understand in terms of the kind of liabilities. It's a liability. It's not that if someone has given the money for his company or her company, the company, the business entity is different from the owner. Always remember this in the context of financial statements, right? Then we move on to loans. You could go to a bank and take a slightly longer term loan, right? There are other classifications as well. Typically, these are called as non-current liabilities. There are some minor other classifications. We will look at them separately. But these are non-current liabilities that you have raised money from some other entities. And then, just like assets, you could have short-term or current liabilities. Anything that you are supposed to pay in less than one year is a current liability. So, what could be, what could come in there is, let's say you purchase something for the business in the form of raw materials but you have not paid for that it is supposed to be paid in near future this is more like an i o u something also termed as i o u's right these i o u's mean that in about a year i have to repay the money let's say i am a car manufacturing company i got the tires from my tire supplier but i did not pay them the money that's a liability for me they've given me a money that's a source of fund for me right those tires effectively are like cash for me i have not paid for cash for it right that's a short term liability for me so when we look at this the important part is a sample balance sheet would appear something like this on the asset side you have what is called as non current assets right then you have the current assets and what is left is known as investments, right? We'll look at this in more detail as well as we go along. On the liabilities side, you have what is called as the owner's equity. This is what the owner puts in. Remember, reserves and surplus is the profit the company has generated, but not paid back to the owner. You have non-current liabilities that come up. And then you have current liability that is typically less than one year, right? We will explain each of the terms that you see in a subsequent section as we go along. What is important for us to understand is that in certain geographies, so here we have put this on the left and this on the right. In certain geographies, you could have liabilities on the, on the top like this and assets on the bottom in this so you you basically have this kind of a structure also that comes you could also use left right separately in certain other geographies the other above representation is horizontal this one is vertical 
right so nowadays most companies follow the vertical representation liability is on the top and then followed by the assets just underneath that so when you compare it's it becomes easier when you look at these financial statements we will continue to discuss the the details of the sample balance sheet and individual items in our next video but as we end this particular section a couple of quick questions for us what do we mean by a balance sheet and why does it balance and explain what do we mean by current assets and non-current assets. Thank you.